vine. And what does he do? He says, come on. Come with us. Come with me. Jesus would spend a lot of time hanging out with the wrong kind of people. Do you remember? Do you remember the story about the man and his barn? This man's crops do very well. His old barn can't hold everything, so he goes, I guess I'll build me a bigger barn. He gets to work. And just as he's driving in the last nail, the man has a heart attack and dies. Jesus uses the story to point out that if you spend your whole life just trying to get more, then you're going to wind up not really living. It's a theme Jesus will return to time and time again. Do you remember that time Peter came to Jesus with a question? How many times should I forgive someone who who treats me badly? Jesus doesn't quote Buzz Lightyear directly to infinity and beyond, but the answer he gives means the same thing. There's not a set number. Forgiveness is a way of living, maintaining the relationship. In a world where revenge and bloodshed was a daily occurrence, this was a big thing. It was a big thing. As Will Willimon once wrote, if you're going to hook up with Jesus, you better prepare to relocate. If not geographically, certainly in the way you are in the world. And Jesus matured in wisdom and years. What about us? As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, this past week was annual conference. During annual conference, our bishop, Cynthia Harvey, shared uh, some of the things that have happened during the year, including including her visit with the Confermans in the conference this year. Confermans, of course, are those young people who have come of age, and it's time for them to make a decision. They are asked to decide two things when they go through confirmation in a church. First, Are you ready to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? And second, are you ready to live out your discipleship in the congregation you are a part of? This year, the bishop gathered confirmands from all over the conference. Our confirmation class, I think the majority of them went. There may have been one who couldn't be there that Saturday. But when the kids got back, I was talking to them. They all had a wonderful time. And apparently, the bishop had a wonderful time too. Because she said, it's going to be something she does every year. Well, during her presentation to the conference, the bishop shared some of the questions she got from the confirmands. One of the questions she got was this one. Does God still love me when I do something wrong? Does God still love me when I do something bad? That's a big question. A very big question. Let me put it to you like this. If you think God still loves you when you do something wrong. Let me hear an amen. Amen. If you don't, if you 
don't think God still loves you when you do something wrong, let me hear you say, oops. Good. You're smarter than they told me you were. <laughs> oh. Something else that happened at conference. The big thing that happens at conference every year is the ordination of new pastors. This year we ordained uh, six elders and one deacon. Now, when before they got ordained, they had to stand before the annual conference and they had to answer the questions we have been asking Methodist preachers for over 200 years now. The first question is always this one. Are you on your way to perfection? That's a good Methodist phrase. Are you on your way to perfection? Are you growing in your love of God? Are you becoming more perfect in your love of neighbor? Are you on your way to perfection? God loves us. But that's not the end of the story. The God who loves us continues to work in us, continues to work with us, so we become the loving people God has created us to be. And Jesus matured in wisdom and in years. Now, you know as well as I do that maturing in years isn't really that hard to do. You go to bed at night, you wake up the next day, <laughs> and you're older. When I got back from conference, I got an email from a woman who was part of a previous congregation I served. She had been their lay delegate, and she emailed me and said, well, I was looking for you at conference, but I couldn't tell which old man you were. <laughs> I know. It's enough to make you cry, isn't it? <laughs> Maturing in years really doesn't take that much effort. But maturing in wisdom, that's different. It doesn't just happen. You can get older and never get any wiser. So how? How do we grow in wisdom? Well, the simple answer is spending time with Jesus. You can spend time with Jesus by going to his house, you remember when Jesus' parents were looking for him, where did they find him? In God's house, doing Bible study. Spend time with Jesus in his house. Listen to the stories from the scriptures as they are read in worship or as they are discussed in Sunday school or at book club or, or as they are sung by the choir. Or, or you could invite Jesus to your house. Now, if you've been Methodist for any length of time, you know about John and Charles Wesley, the two brothers who were the driving force behind the early Methodist movement, John the great preacher and organizer, Charles the great hymn writer, Hark the herald angels sing, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. But you know, like all of us, they had parents. Their father was Samuel. He was a priest in the Church of England. And their mother, her name was Susanna. Well, there came a time when Samuel got called away on business from the church he was serving. 
and the associate pastor had to take over for a spell. The associate pastor was ineffective. People quit going to church. So Susanna started hosting meetings in her kitchen. They'd have a Bible study, they'd have some prayer, they'd sing some songs. <laughs> well, the associate pastor wasn't too happy with this. And he wrote Samuel a letter. Do you know what your wife is doing? Samuel wrote his wife. What's going on? You know, it's not right for you to be leading worship and Bible study. Susanna wrote him back. I'll stop if you want me to, but you're the one who's going to have to explain to God why these poor people have no spiritual guidance. The Bible studies continue. Invite Jesus to your house. Or, or we had two wonderful speakers at conference this year. One was Paul Chilcote. He was a professor that has taught at several seminaries. He's done some research at Wesley House in Cambridge. And the other was Michael Beck. Beck grew up a, a troubled kid and a troubled young adult who eventually found God, found Jesus, got ordained as a Methodist pastor. He is currently serving as the pastor of the Little Methodist Church in Florida his grandparents used to drag him to when he was growing up. He told a wonderful story about a man in his congregation who has a labradoodle. And this man will take his labradoodle to the dog park several times a week. He sits on a bench, turns his dog loose. Other people come in with their dogs, turn them loose, sit on the same bench, and he'll strike up a conversation. You know, if God was a dog, what kind of dog would God be? Now, Belle the Beautiful Mick, Beagle Mix, told me exactly what kind of dog God would be. But everyone there, everyone there had a different answer. It got them to thinking about who God is and who God calls us to be. Spend some time with Jesus at his house, at your house. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you listened, really, really listened to the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes we recite it in worship, sometimes we sing it, but it's the same thing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now repeat after me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now I want you to remember that as I tell you this story. It was back when I was in college. One evening during the week, I'm doing my studying. There's a knock at my door. I open it up. There's two guys from campus. I've seen them before, but we've never talked. We don't know each other. They, they apologize for interrupting, but, but say they have a question for me. So I say, okay, what's your question? This was their question. If you died tonight, do you know where you are going? Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's get back to the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This is the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And when I listen to that prayer, you know what occurs to me? Jesus was less interested in getting us into heaven as he was in getting heaven into us. In reshaping us into the loving people God calls us to be. Jesus matured in wisdom and in years. Whether we be 12 or 112, may we never tire, never tire of growing in wisdom. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We invite you to stand and sing, This is My Father's World. As we come now to this time of prayer, let's take a moment first to pray for those fathers with us this morning, those fathers not with us this morning, those fathers who live in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. Let us now be in a spirit of prayer. 
for our fathers who have given us life and love, that we may show them respect and love. We pray to you, O Lord, for fathers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to you, O Lord. For men, though without children of their own, who like fathers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to you, O Lord. For fathers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children, and who have not sustained their families, we pray to you, O Lord. O God, our Father, in wisdom and love, you have made all things. Bless the fathers with us today, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, as we move on with this time of prayer, I have a, a, a couple of uh, items to bring to your attention. First of all, Troy Alexander spent a good part of this past week in the hospital. Uh, he should be on his way home this morning. Also, we want to keep uh, uh, Linda Harness in our prayers. Her son Bobby died this past week. Uh, it has been an ongoing uh, health issue with him, uh, but that, of course, hurts. I don't know of anything harder that any human being can go through than a parent coping with the death of a child. It does not matter how old that child is. So let us keep Linda and her family in our prayers. Also, we want to continue to pray for Vacation Bible School. It's almost upon us. Uh, may it be the week that God needs it to be for the little ones in our community. This past week, the students who survived the Sandy Hook shooting graduated from high school. Jesus calls us to love our neighbor. I don't know what that means to you, but to me, it means keeping our little ones safe as they go about their lives, as they learn in school and grow. May God give us the wisdom and the courage to make that a reality. Now, I know when you came in this morning, you had your own concerns weighing on your heart. I know you had your own joys to celebrate. I invite you to lift them up to the Lord as we pause now for just a few moments of silent prayer. Dearest God, like our parents who loved us before we were born, you have cradled us in your great heart, loving us, providing for us, before we ever had memories of your care. We thank you for loving us when we were helpless, vulnerable, capable of giving little of what the world holds in high esteem. 
Since we were once children, it should not be so hard to remember what childhood is like. We remember childhood as a time of indignities, small daily humiliations, clumsiness, and the realization of how little we knew when compared to the wise adults all around us. But just because we are grown is no reason to forget the terrors of being small and needy. Jesus said we must see in each person the child who is hungry for kindness and affection. Then following Jesus, we must embrace them all with encompassing love. Help us, O God, in welcoming children and all like them to find you in the eyes of all whom we meet. Amen. Oh,
thy Savior's son, just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angels man, just over as you are so generous with us. Bless the gifts we bring this day. Use them for your purposes. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Now, if there are any this day who desire to become a part of this family of faith, either through a vow of profession of faith or through the transfer of your letter of membership, I invite you to come forward, join me here at the front, as we now raise our voices to heaven.
father or grandfather to go see today, God be with you. If you're not in a hurry, if you're not seeing your father or grandfather till later, you are invited to stay for the recap of annual conference. We'll take a little break, go get a cup of coffee out of the fellowship hall, then gather back in here. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you. Amen and amen and amen. service this morning. We apologize for the technical difficulties that delay the start of this broadcast. May you have a blessed weekend.